make sure you guys hit the like button. Make sure you guys subscribe. So that's two things. Oh, let's do the most infamous thing I like to say. You got questions, comments, concerns, and the new one, you just want to leave whatever you want to say. You want whatever you want to say to me. You can say it. Make, you want to tell them about to subscribe to my YouTube channel? Okay, so I have to do this. So. <laughs> You can got to do it. Uh, make sure you guys hit the, uh, the subscribe button. Any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, or whatever, leave it in the uh, comment section, of course. And I get back to it when I can. Um, title of this video, I don't know if you guys can see me, but let me sit down in the chair. The title of this video is going well. It's going to be part four, because I already did part three talking about innocent transmission. But part four is just uh, me talking about improvising. So you see this setup. Uh, I rigged it up. This is a rigged setup. See this block of wood, and uh, it's. I made a beam. I made a beam uh, using an inch of support bar. Just, just a piece of it. Actually, it's uh, half of it. And uh, the reason I use this because you know you you put me working in shops like this. A lot of you know shops like this. If you ain't the dealership, if you ain't no full shop that's equipped with a lot of equipment, you're gonna run into a lot, like a lot of snags, especially when doing engines and transmissions. And you got. Uh, an inadequate amount of uh, shop equipment, that's the correct word to use, inadequate. You have to mention the seatbelt. Oh, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, seatbelt. So uh, one thing, you know, there's a few things that's always going to get you by. This, this is all about improvising. It doesn't matter. Uh, uh, it does kind of matter to a certain extent, which you see something that's strong, something that's rugged, something that's durable, something that's going to last, something that's not going to bend. Uh, like I said, I use this support bar. And the reason I did it in this way because you know the longer support bars, you know what they look like from one end to another, and they mount up to the uh, the strut tower or a part of the uh, fender side. Well, in this case, uh, the way everything is set up, the strut towers are back here, and you got the air filter right here, and you got all this old fuse box and cruise control or engine mount bull crap over here. You can't really do shit because you got shit in a fucking way is what I really meant to fucking say. I forgot, you know, there I wasn't cursing for a second, not sounding like my fucking self and shit. Um, but what was I saying? I, I think I'm losing my train of thought or whatever. Um, okay, so I got a piece engine support bar. I couldn't find nothing in the shop. So, but we did have uh, the engine support bar and it wasn't long enough. So I used a half of it. Uh, long block of wood. I don't know if this would consider the... Uh, so four by four. Four by four? Okay. All right, four by four. Inch forward. My grandma used to always say, um, what, yeah, it's with a four by four or two by four. That's her favorite yeah. line. But she said two by four. She's swinging four by four. Your grandma. You know, yeah, my grandma was me. She was nice. She was fucking she me. She was making cookies. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but uh, I used a seatbelt. Um, actually, we use a lot of seatbelts in here on uh, a lot of things. We had a lot of collision cars, cars that get uh, just, just, just parted out, and we just. We end up with a lot of seatbelts and they get scrapped. But uh, it's there will be, it's not a, uh, it's an inquite, inadequate amount of uh, shop tools to use, shop equipment, but there are an adequate amount of things that you can make up to use. So, um, like I said, I found something sturdy. Bam, got my seatbelt. You know, seatbelts can hold uh, a lot of weight, a lot of weight. So, um, that's good. Like I said, I got my, you know, block of wood and I'm gonna take this off the tripod in a second. Um, so, you know, you can see, but if you, when you're doing stuff like this, when you're improvising, when you're in a place where you have to improvise, you got to go back and to that, uh, to, to all of the, uh, backyard mechanic skills that you harvest. You got to, or harbor, you got to go back and got to just bring it out, bring it out in a place like this and think to yourself, what would I do if I was in, you know, my mom's driveway or if I was in, you know, my, my, my grandparents' driveway, whatever driveway you went. What can you do to get yourself out of this situation? So, me, when I'm working and doing big jobs, so I kind of, it, it ain't kind of, I don't let nothing get in my way. So, I will be up and down in the shop, walking around, just going through stuff, checking through scrap piles, going out in the back of the shop, the side, or wherever we got scrap parts at. I'm going to make me something to use. Just, you know, I got to get paid. I got to get this job done. Um, in this field, things that are impossible in the shop can be, very, be, can be done very possible. Outside, for example, uh, Working Hands Automotive. I don't know if I'm saying YouTube channel name right, but if I can remember, Working, working Hands Automotive. Uh, he's been, you know, going live, and uh, I bro, before I get into it, you gotta see how I'm filming this video landscape like this way, horizontal. You can't use the vertical or the portrait mode because it it, it detracts the uh, 
the whole view of the video of what's being seen because you got it and and uh being filmed and and you know, like and portrait portrait's not good enough Land, landscape you get a better view of things so work your hands bro start using uh the landscape view horizontal don't use vertical because vertical like i said you're not gonna really get a good view and a lot of viewers don't like that and you know you got content bro i would like to see you post more definitely post more and you know get into the more how to think side of, or how to side of things so that way you know i can subscribe of course so he pulled a transmission out of a, a ultima like a 2007 to 2012 body style nissan ultima he pulled the transmission out from the top and me when i do engines or transmissions in that car well if i did transmission i took it out from the bottom uh you know or doing an engine i don't take those engines out from the top either take it out from the bottom but you know that method that's all about being in the backyard just or your driveway you just you start improvising you start how he took it out from the top like i said i would have took it out from the bottom it's all kind of methods my method ain't gonna be your method your method could be different i'm just saying when you you in a snag this is when it's good to have that backyard skill set definitely so let me go ahead and show y'all uh, what I'm working with and all of that or whatever. Any questions you got, guys have about you know me replacing the transmission, I'll be sure to go over it and just give me a second. So for those who want to know, this is 2005 Honda Pilot. I don't know what the year goes up to. I know my daughter's mom has this car in 2008. I believe this one goes up to 2012, 13, or I don't know. You can correct me. You guys are the expert. Everyone's an expert on the internet. So someone be sure to you know fill me in on you know that whole thing, but uh, like I said, 2005 Honda Pilot all-wheel drive, and this was like I said, this is my setup, and this is why I got it hooked up to around the uh, intake manifold, and there's a hook right there, well uh, you know jacking uh, support bracket or whatever you want to call it, and you see all the oil dry at the bottom because my dumbass I didn't dream the fucking transmission so. Shit spilled all at the fucking bottom and shit. Now I got a lot of fucking shit to fucking clean up. Got fucking damn it. And uh, as we can see, let's go in more. So it's not a pain in the ass job. Let's go over to the transmission. It can be a pain in the ass. That's the one the unit that's going in from the yard. So I got to prep, prep that up. Get all the uh, cut wires and hoses and all of that extra crap off. Got to change out the torque converter sill. And this is the one that just came out and the reason why i was getting replaced because it was just it was slipping bad it was slipping bad like really fucking bad and you you could get it to move but you got to really smash on the gas to get it to go and then low gear so yep that's the units coming out so I'm waiting for got a few more things coming in tomorrow once i get those in then you know i could get back to you know putting this transmission back in so coming out wasn't that bad where I last left off at, as you can see, I did a little clip, a little cut and edit. Uh, like I said, it wasn't that bad. You know, you gotta, it's like climbing the mountain to get your subframe out. But once you get the subframe out, got the engine lowered down some, got enough rum, get the transmission out. Uh, you see, uh, I don't know if I showed you, I probably didn't, but left these parts with most of the suspension on. Um, left the rack. Got the steering wheel locked into place. Got the rack still on the uh, subframe. Uh, good thing about, well, I, me doing this setup that I have a side engine mount, but I don't have a side engine mount on that side. Luckily, it's not like uh, the uh, four cars that I work on, like the Taurus or like a Mazda 6 or, I'm just speaking of the 3.0 motor, or the, uh, the Ford, uh, what was that, the Ford 500 I did recently, uh, weeks ago. That one, the engine sat and the engine and transmission sat on subframe. It's, you don't wanna, when you get to that type of job, you'll know what I'm talking about. That's the one that's a pain in the ass. Some engines come where it's mounted on uh, both sides of the side frame. Some engines it's not mounted that way. This one, I got a side mount. Like I said, the other one don't. So I just needed something to keep this side of the engine up and not that I rigged up something, I wasn't ghetto, I wasn't unprofessional about it, just, I'm an improviser, I improvise, so, it's part four, I hope you guys like it, any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, anything you want to get off your chest, leave it in the comment section, uh, if you got questions, you want me to chime in on something for uh, my part five that I'll be coming out whenever I get uh, the next job, um, 
hopefully I have another transmission lined up uh, this week or next week. I'm not sure or whatever. It depends on uh, how things pan out. But uh, make sure you guys fill out that comment section. You guys got questions or whatever. And uh, again, thanks for watching. Leak Auto Repair. And that's all I got to fucking talk about.